Hello, everyone. Welcome to Calvary International Baptist Church's uh, Wednesday night, verse by verse and chapter by chapter Bible study. Let's start with a prayer. So, Heavenly Father, we again want to thank you for tonight that we can be here uh, on YouTube to study your word. And we just ask you, Lord, to help us to have our hearts open to lay down any worries that we have and any distractions that we have and to just um, listen to your word and allow your word to come inside our hearts, your living word, Lord, and we need it. It's, um, it's bread to our, our spiritual lives. So may you just uh, bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see. I'm getting an echo in here. Let me see if I can move a little bit away. Okay, we're going to start with, um, we're in Proverbs, and tonight we'll be in Proverbs 10 and um, and see how far we can go, maybe 10, 11. You know, Proverbs 10 starts with um, the Proverbs of Solomon, and just like, um, you know, chapter 1, in terms of, um, in chapter 1, it talks about that uh, what a proverb is and gives us an introduction um, and Solomon uh, want us to know about understanding proverbs the uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom um, also in that uh, we mentioned a few weeks ago that not every verse is a proverb. A lot of it is explanations, um, but uh, there. But when a proverb does come, and um, Solomon wrote what over three thousand proverbs, um, there's always going to be um, um, contrast, or uh, they may it may be clump, complementary. It may be um, amplifying something. So we're going to see that here, but. Starting with chapter 10, um, there's going to be, you know, this is where kind of the main proverb starts. That there's proverbs before this, but there are just um, explanations uh, also. But here is mainly, um, is, uh, mainly proverbs, and it has um, uh, a lot of it is uh, contrasting one thing uh, against another. Um, and when it talks about righteousness, uh, you'll notice that righteousness is always um, correlates to uh, life, to eternal life. Uh, righteousness or justice, you know, equate to life or eternal life. Those are a few things that, um, that I want to point out first. So let's start. Chapter 10, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is grief of his mother. Right away, there's a contrast. A wise son, you know, makes glad a father. It's a dad is proud of uh, a wise son, uh, a son who makes uh, good decisions, especially, you know, for Christians and Christian families. We want our children, our sons, our daughters to walk with the Lord. And again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if a a son, a daughter, and our goal as parents should be that we introduce the Lord to them and they will be able to walk with the Lord after, even after they leave the house, when they're by themselves, when they're um, uh, starting their new lives, uh, you know, independent of, of um, living inside a, uh, the parents' house. If they can walk with the Lord then, you know, we don't worry. The reason is God's going to take care of them. They're walking with the Lord. So a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. So true. Foolish children, foolish sons, foolish daughters, um, it grieves moms, um, grieves dads, but, but moms have these heavy hearts. Uh, when when children are are making foolish decisions, verse two: treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. 
you know, if you make your treasure, if you make your money based on wicked deeds, if you're cheating someone, if you're doing some, you know, lying and, and you're, you know, just um, uh, taking other people's stuff, uh, it's, uh, it profits nothing because you're going to be so worried. You're worried about somebody's going to find out. Um, blood pressure is going to rise. Um, not worth it. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. Again, righteousness um, gives us life, delivers from death, and it uh, talks about eternal life. When we, are, when we have the righteousness of our Lord and Savior Jesus, He died for, on the cross for us. He gave us, um, it's the um, unfair exchange. He gave us His righteousness. We gave Him our sin. But righteousness delivers from death. The Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish. You know, if you're walking with the Lord and if you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, you're not going to be in need. You're not. You know, you're, the Lord will fill you. He's the bread of life. He is the one who gives. Um, there's a Matthew 6, I put it down here. Um, he says that, you know, um, Matthew six twenty eight. Jesus said, So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You know, if we're walking with the Lord, if we're seeking God first, God will take care of you. It's a promise from the Lord. But if you're walking in unrighteousness, if you're walking, uh, just doing things that are against what the Lord's telling us to do, then all bets are, are off, right? Um, it, we're doing, and we don't want to leave the protection of God. Okay. And then um, the end of verse 3 is, but he cast away the desires of the wicked. So the Lord will not allow the righteous soul to famish, meaning that he's going to take care of you if you're walking with the Lord. But if you're not walking with the Lord, he casts away the desires of the wicked. Verse 4, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. It talks about the difference between the contrast between the lazy and the diligent. So if you're diligent, you can, he who has a slack hand becomes poor if you're lazy, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Makes sense. He who gathers in the summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in the harvest is a son who causes shame. Again, again it's the contrast between the diligent and the lazy. Verse 6, blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Again, if you're righteous, you're going to get the blessings. If you're just, you're going to get the blessings, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. You know, if you're doing well, if you're doing good, if you're helping people, you know, people will remember. But if you're not, if you're doing the opposite, it says, but the name of the wicked will rot. <clears throat> Verse 8, 
The wise in heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will fall. You know, it's contrasting between the wise and the fool. Verse 9, he who walks with integrity walks secure, securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. You know, if you walk, if you walk the talk, walk in, in integrity, you're going to be secure. You're going to be confident because you're doing what you're saying. You're not, you know, saying something and doing the opposite. But he who perverts his ways will become known. We may think we could get away with things. And maybe for a short while, you may be able to hide. But God is not mocked. He sees everything. And everything will be made known. Verse 10. He who winks with the eye causes trouble, but a prating fool will fall. And again, this is not a contrast. This is almost like an amplification. It's saying the same thing. You, you know, you're, you're just, you're not, you're winking with the eye. You're saying that, you know, I'm going to do this even though it may look different, but, you know, you know what I really mean. But I pray, and that's a fool. A fool will fall. Verse 11, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. What we say, we have to be very careful. Because what we say, go. I mean, when people hear it, once it goes out of the mouth, you can't take it back. And so we have to be careful what we say. and We have to, to think things through. We don't want to... Um, if, if you are walking with the Lord, and I love being with people who are walking with the Lord because what they say is, um, is life. And I, you, it's wisdom. And you, you, um, you learn a lot from them. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. But if things that comes out of the mouth is always evil, negative, um, slander, gossip, we don't want to hang around people like that. Verse 12, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. You know, love covers all sins. It just happened this last Sunday. Um, uh, you know, the, we have kids in, in church and they're running around and all that, and we love these kids. They're just so much fun. I love my I mean, I love my children, but they're all adults now. I love my grandchildren. And um, whenever I get a chance to spend time with them, um, you know, they could do no wrong. They, they could, you know, uh, maybe a diaper change and stuff. It's okay. Yeah, or if they just um, jump on you and we're not expecting it, it's okay. Because we love, love covers all sins, right? So this last Sunday, there was a, uh, one of the kids at school, at, uh, uh, at, in church. Um, we love these kids, and they're just they're running around. And one came in with a little car, and um, and and accidentally bumped into a um, you know a, a door and, and or a um, shelf, and uh, and there was a vase and broke the vase, and he just had a, a look of horror, but you know. The brothers and sisters um, that were there saying, hey, it's okay. Are you hurt? And no, he, he wasn't hurt, and, but he was just had a sad look. He was had a, had a fearful look. But we're just saying that, hey, it's okay. You know, we just want to make sure that you're okay. And he looked and he said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He said, you know, it's an accident. It's okay. You know, and he had a look of relief and and it's because the brothers and sisters, he calls them uncles and aunties, and, and he, he sees the love. And I, could, I was just watching this, and I, and I looked at him and said, hey, it's okay, no worries. But you can see the love and, oh, from, from the sister there and people just coming to help and making sure he's okay and get, getting rid of the glass. And uh, it was just so cool, love covers um, 
all, but love covers all sin. And it's, it was by accident, and he was thinking he was going to get um, uh, yelled at. No, none of that. It was just love. And sometimes we need to, you know, as Christians, God will give us the wisdom um, to express um, our, uh, his grace, uh, his mercy, his forgiveness um, when things don't go the way we want it to go. And when accidents happen, when bad news come, we're going to know who you are, who I am, when surprises come. And actually, uh, when surprises come, the things that's deep inside our heart is going to come right out. So the best is to spend time with God's Word. Spend time with Jesus. Spend time just praying and allow every morning for God's mercy, God's love, God's forgiveness to be poured into us. And that way, it's all in us. And then as we live life throughout the day, when we go to work, when we're with family, when we're driving, allow it to flow out. And when surprises happen, let it flow out. And that's only when we spend time with the Lord. If we don't, um, other stuff flows out. Okay, um, verse 13. Wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding, but a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? And then w when we have fear of the Lord and we have that wisdom, we have that understanding. But if we don't have understanding from the Lord, then bad things happen. Verse 14, wise people store up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. You know, we need to seek the Lord and, and have that instruction from Him. Verse 15, the rich man's wealth is his strong city, the destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous leads to life. The wages of the wicked to sin. You know, when we sin, we bear the fruit of sin. Verse 17. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes astray. You know, when God shows us something in his word, or when a uh, brother or sister who loves the Lord and who loves us comes and tell us, you know, hey, hey, you know, hey, John, you know, there's something that I need to tell you. You know, the situation that happened, maybe, you know, I saw it this way, maybe you could have handled it a better way. You know, if it's from a brother and sister who loves the Lord, who knows that I know that loves me and and cares and wants to sh uh, share a correcting word to me, I take it. I'd love to take it because I know that's from the Lord. And we want to, um, it's the way to life. And, um, but if someone comes in and I know that they have evil motives, meaning that they don't have the right motive, they just want to you know, they have ulterior motives, then, of course, I'm going to tell them that, you know, um, you keep praying, I'm going to keep praying and, and ask the Lord to, to lead and guide. But usually what happens is God will speak to you, to me, of, of anything that he wants to correct. And he prepares our hearts to receive it. But if we have a hard heart, then we won't receive it. So, he who keeps instruction is the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes astray. We must keep our hearts open and allow the Lord to pour in. And when he sends someone,
to talk to us, we'll know that this person is from the Lord. Um, I, I gave this uh, illustration one time. Um, you know, people would come and tell people that, hey, the Lord tells me, tells me to, you need to marry me. And I would always inform people saying that if it's that important, God will tell you also. Not just telling one side, he'll tell both sides, right? It's an extreme example, but that's what he, but um, that's, it relates to this. So if someone comes to correct us, um, we pray and ask the Lord if it's from him, we take it, and if it's not, then we don't. Verse 18, whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. You know, this is um, so true. There are people who comes to you, and they actually hate you. Whoever, whoever hides hatred has lying lips. They'll come to you and say, hey, you know, uh, I came to forgive you. I'm going, what, what happened? I'm going, what are you talking about? But, oh, God tell me to come to forgive you. And that is, that's not a way to start, you know, um, uh, a conversation, right? We need to have that heart of being um, open, of being real, of being humble, and, and let's talk about it. Let's say that, you know, it's, um, this is what happened, and this is how I saw it. We don't start with, I, you know, God told me to forgive you. You can't say anything. I just want to, you know, I want to just get off my chest and forgive you. That's not forgiveness. That's this, whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. That is a fool who has lying lips. And it's just, um, we need to be careful. When God tells us to forgive, and we should, we need to go to that person and do what the Lord tells us to do and not just go in there and just kind of force it down on them. And they don't even understand what they did. And they, they, they may not have done anything. It could have been you. So, Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. If you have hatred, first of all, we need to forgive. We need to get rid of that hatred before we can even do it. And forgiveness is not just saying the words. Forgiveness is from the heart. God sees the heart. We can say anything we want. We can say, oh, I know Jesus, I do. But Jesus would... Um, the people who went to Jesus who said, hey, I did this for you, I did that for you. And Jesus said, I never knew you because he sees the heart. So whoever hides hatred has a lying lips. In fact, that's a hypocrite. Uh, if you're hiding hatred and saying good things about to that person, I forgive you, but you have hatred in your heart towards this person, that's a hypocrite. That's not forgiveness. And, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. Well, let me go. Now, verse 19. In a multitude of words is in a multitude of words sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. So good. Sometimes it's just better to just keep quiet. Instead of saying, I forgive you, just keep quiet. Just ask the Lord. To take care of it, you know some um, a, lo a lot of things that um, that comes to me. I would just pray and say, Lord, I'm just going to give it to you. You can do a better job than me. And in a multitude of words, sin is not lacking, which is so true. And I actually learned this from my my mom. Um, she she said if she when she gets angry, she will just keep quiet. She's not going to go talk to anybody because words will come out. And she was just telling me this, this the other day. And I was going, wow, Mom, that's pretty good. She says she's been following this most of her life, and she's 88. And so multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. 
That was, I think we should all follow that. Verse 20, the tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. That's self-explanatory. Verse 22, the blessings of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. You know, um, riches in God's eyes is not the riches in this world's eyes. Riches in the world's eyes is money, fame, power. But riches in God's eyes is the blessings from the Lord. You know, I have a, um, you know, friends. Um, in fact, uh, Renee and Joseph, uh, they're, uh, they're in, um, in Ohio. I've known Renee for um, almost, let me think, 35 over 35 years, we were in high school. Let me think, it's uh, maybe 40, 40 years. Yeah, yeah, more than 40, 43 years. Because we, we were in high school, and, um, uh, and she, she married a, um, a, a pastor, a missionary, and, and, they are probably, uh, Renee and Joseph are probably the happiest people um, that, and joyful people that I know, but they don't make that much money. They're missionaries. They're pastors. Uh, you know, they're uh, in, a, in a small school setting, and they take in people from the you know, students. They have Bible studies. They have international students that come in, and they would just share the word of God with them, and and they see their lives transform. And now all these people are going out to their different uh, locations, uh, different parts of the world, and they're sharing gospel as doctors, as nurses, as. But they don't make that much money. They they make pretty much like the minimum, right? And. They get support from friends and, fa you know, from people, from friends and family. But they raised four kids. And they raised four kids who have college degrees. And they raised four kids who have college degrees. And some of them have graduate degrees and they have their own families. And they're just joyful. The Lord blessed them mightily. And they're not lacking anything. They're rich. They're very, very rich. I know people who ha are millionaires, maybe even billionaires, but so much worry. Uh, can't sleep. Uh, a lot of just anxiety. Medication. And they have more money than they could spend for many, many lifetimes. But riches of this world and riches from God, it says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. When you're walking with the Lord, when the Lord blessed you with a wife, if you're a woman with a husband, with children, with the work, with a shelter, with forgiveness of sins with mercy. The blessings of the Lord makes one rich. If you're walking with the Lord and you're good with the Lord, you're rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. So good. Verse 23, to do evil is like sport to a fool, but a man of understanding has wisdom. There are people who love to do evil. It's sport to them. They want other people to fall. And it's very sad. But a man of understanding has wisdom. The fear of the wicked will come upon him. So true. If you're doing something bad and you're, you're always afraid, you're afraid of being found out, you're afraid 
whatever that worst case scenario is, it's going to happen. The fear of the wicked will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. If you're walking with the Lord, if you're praying that the Lord will, will bless the church, that it will bless your family, that will, as we walk with him, and as we go through the difficulties with him, and knowing that he's with us, he's leading us, the desires that is of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes by, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. We're going to heaven. We have an everlasting foundation. But for the wicked, when the whirlwind, when storms come, boom, gone. As vinegar to teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the lazy man to those who send him. Um, yeah, uh, smoke to the eyes. Um, you, we don't want to send, have a lazy person come to us. It's going to be, we're going to, nothing's good's going to happen because they don't want to do the work and it's foggy and everything is not clear. Um, yeah, and it's going to have a really sour taste to it. So, uh, anyway, I'll just keep it. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. So true. When we walk with the Lord, we, we're, we don't, we're not going to be very anxious. We're not going to have our blood pressures rising, but it, if, when we're not walking with the Lord and doing what the Lord tells us not to do, you're not going to prolong your day. And the years of the wicked will be shortened. The hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. Hope for Christians is not wishful thinking. That hope, actually that faith, the substance of that hope is going to be faith. And that faith is knowing that God will do something good in the future. For the wicked, there's no such thing. Verse 29, the way of the Lord is strength for the upright, but the destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. You know, we're going to have a new heaven and new earth. Wicked will not be there. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked, what is perverse. All right, chapter 11. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. You know, for businesses back then, they used balances. It's a scale. So if you want to buy a pound of wheat, or, you, know, you know, they have a scale and a weight that's, you know, certain, you know, a pound, five pounds, and then you weigh it out. But there's, um, there are business people who would cut corners. And they'll say this is, let's just say it's a pound, but it's really not a pound. It's less than that. And so they do things, um, they cheat. God does not want business people or anyone to cheat, to do business unwisely, unjustly. God wants people to be fair. Um, people today would say that, you know, we can't do that. You know, if we're, if we're really open and honest, we we'll, won't make any money. You know, God sees everything. And God can take care of everything. And dishonest scales are just not good. Just wait but a just weight is his delight. Verse 2, when pride comes, then comes shame, but with a humble is wisdom. Verse 3, the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will, will destroy them. Riches do not profit in a day of wrath. You know, so true. When we meet the Lord, or when destruction comes, when judgment comes, 
It doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank. You can't take it with you. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your stock portfolio or how much real estate you have or how much real estate in the, your trust that you have. None of that matters. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. It means nothing when you meet Jesus. You can't take it with you. You can't say, hey, Jesus, I have so much money. In. No, you're dead. You're meeting, you, you don't have, you're meeting the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Riches doesn't matter. What does matter is did you walk with him? And he and doesn't, and, and by the way, just because you say that, hey, I know you, Jesus, doesn't mean anything either. Or even if you say, I, get, I got baptized. He sees the heart. All those people in Matthew 7 who says, Lord, Lord, and I mentioned this earlier, you know, I did this, I cast out demons, I did miracles for you. They, all, they were all baptized. <laughs> They're leaders of churches. But the Lord says, I don't know you. I never knew you. It's sad, but it should wake us up. If we're counting on riches, if we're counting because of who my mom and my dad and how much money they gave to the church or how much my foundation gave to the church, you know, none of that matters. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. When judgment comes, it's going to be just you and the Lord. And have you, did, are you walking with him? Are you in his word? Do you have the fruit of the spirit? And Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. But righteousness delivers from death. When we're walking with the Lord, it'll deliver you from death. You're not going to be afraid. You're going to say to the Lord, Lord, I can only be here because you forgave me for all my sins. You transformed my life. I've been looking forward to this day. And only by the grace, your grace, can I even be here. Verse 5, the righteousness, righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. Verse 7, when a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, but the hope of the unjust, and the hope of the unjust perishes. It's the same thing. When a wicked man dies, there's no more hope. It's done. Remember, hope for Christians is that God will do something good in the future. None of that for wicked. The righteous is delivered from trouble, but it comes to the wicked instead. You know, so true. If we're plotting something that's evil, that we're going to plot and just, you know, be in a dark place and just saying that this is going to happen and, you know, we're, don't do that. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes, they did all that stuff. And Jesus called them out. He, he called them um, uh, whitewashed tombs, dead on the inside, looking good on the outside. We don't want to, we don't want to, um, to be a hypocrite. And, God, and Jesus called these guys out as hypocrites. When we plan things for other people to fall, you know, God sees it. And it's going to come back to you. The righteous is delivered from trouble, and it comes to the wicked instead. Verse 9, the hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. Everything will come out in the open. The truth will come out. We can 
say all sorts of crazy things against you know that person, that person, against this person. But the truth will come out. God knows the truth. And the hypocrite loves to say this and that, and you know, he did this, he did that. But God sees it. And through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. If you're not doing anything wrong, if God sees you and that you're doing what he wants us, wants you to do, what wants me to do, it'll all come out. Verse 10, when it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices, and when the wicked perish, there is jubilation. Um, so true. When the righteous is doing well, you know, everybody's happy, but the, when the wicked dies, um, there's great jubilation because this person's causing a lot of trouble. Um, there was a story about um, Herod the Great. He was hated by everybody. And Herod the Great has a, um, a fear. It's almost a paranoia where he knows everybody hates him. And then he's afraid that when he dies, that there's going to be great jubilation. So he ordered that on the day of his death, he, you know, Google this, he, on the day of his death, that several prominent people who everybody loves, they are to be killed. Why? This is how wicked this guy is. So people would mourn. So instead of having a big party of him dying, all these good people are going to die on that day, so there's going to be mourning. So this is how ridiculous that his brain is. But what happened was, um, and people, you know, the soldiers all knew about this. So when he died, the soldiers were wise enough to say that he died. We don't have to carry out this. So everybody rejoiced. So, it, and this is true. The, um, the righteous, uh, it says that uh, when the wicked perish, there is jubilation. And it happened to Herod the Great. Okay, um, verse 11. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his peace. You know, when people could be yelling at you, your neighbors could be yelling at you and saying all sorts of nasty things against you. But God, if you have the Lord inside you, when everything is storming, and the, one of the worst storms is when people is just, you know, just trying to get you, and even standing in front of you. But when you have the Lord with you, you'll be able to hold your peace. God is our defender. We give it to the Lord. He can defend us better than we can do it ourselves. Because I'm, you know, if I didn't have the Lord... I would just go, oh, let's fight, let's do this, let's do that. If someone's trying to step on your toes, you want to step on them back? No. We're Christians. We pray. We ask the Lord for help. He'll give us the wisdom in what to do, and you'll be able to hold your peace. Verse 13, a talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Don't be giving away secrets. You know, someone, you know, just, it's better to just keep our mouth shut. We need to have understanding. When we, and by the way, if, um, when we say that, hey, keep this a secret, you know, between you and me, you know it's going to get out because somebody's hearing it. Um, usually, just, Let's not slander people. Let's not, you know, if, if we don't have anything, anything good to say, we pray about it, and then just, um, uh, and we don't have to spread it around. Say, oh, you know, this guy did this. Oh, she did this. What? She did what? And the next thing you know, it's, it just spreads like wildfire. We, we, we don't want that. And the Lord doesn't want us to do that. Verse 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. 
But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. So true. It, um, we need to be humble enough to ask for advice. But we need to go to people who we know who are walking with the Lord, who are wise, who, um, you know, I, I go to my elders. I go to the deacons. I go to people I know. I go to uh, my pastor friends, my good friends. And they're, they're always praying for me, and, and they love me, and they, um, they, they, they want the best for me, and they're not afraid to say no to me. And they would say, uh, you know, even, you know, the other day, Elder Henry just said, you know, you should look at it this way. And I'm going, to thank you so much. It's, he's been praying for me. You know, I, and, and I know, you know, Brian and Ting and all these guys are, uh, they just love the church. And, and I know they have a love for me. And, and, and it's so good. Multitude of counselors. It's good. And one of them is my best friend, is my wife. And, and she, uh, she just prays for me. I'm, every single day, all the time, and she just prays for her hubby, and her hubby loves it. So anyway, okay, uh, verse 15, he who is sh uh, surety for a stranger, he who is surety for a stranger will suffer, but he who hates being surety is secure. This is so important. Don't be a guarantor of someone's debt. And I'm talking about even if it's a relative, even if it's your own children, not worth it. The Bible is, tells us not to do it. I've seen so many things that could go wrong that, that generations of people, meaning that previous, you know, you, your children, grandchildren would suffer if you sign. The reason is once you sign, you're going to be in charge of that debt. And, oh, my kids will never know. You never know. You never know. So if you want to give them the money, give it to them. But don't sign. Um, we can talk about that later, but it's, um, it's in the Bible many, many times. Um, don't do that. But he, one who hates being surety is secure. That should tell us something. A gracious woman retains honor, but a ruthless man retains riches. This word ruthless, ruthless here, it means strong men retain, retains riches. The merciful man does good for his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. You know, this he who is cruel is people who are unforgiving, people who are just... Um, uh, you know, just just vicious. You know, if if you keep being, um, if you're just not a good person and treat people wrongly, you're gonna hurt yourself. First of all, your blood pressure is high, and you're anxious all the time. Trouble your own flesh. Verse eighteen: The wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward. A righteous, as righteousness leads to life, so he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. Again, the contrast. Righteousness, justice, leads to life, but evil pursues death. Verse 20. Those who are a perverse of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord. You know, I don't ever want to be called, number one, an enemy of God. I don't want to be called an abomination of the Lord. We don't want to have perverse hearts, and we don't want to do anything against God's people, against God's church, against God's word. We don't want to be an enemy of God. It's, it's not worth it. You'll never win. And you may win temporarily here on earth, but it's, you'll never win in heaven. Because an enemy of God, God will judge. And with all this, those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination of the Lord. We don't want to be an abomination of the Lord. But the blameless in their ways are his delight. Verse 21, though they join forces, the wicked will not 
go unpunished, but the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. You know, wicked loves wicked people, and they want to join forces. Doesn't matter. You can have the most powerful people together and to join force to go against God's church, against God's people, against the Lord. Is they're not going to prosper. They won't even have good sleep. They'll be anxious. They'll be doing this, doing that, and trying to figure this out, trying to figure that out, trying to do this cultural thing. And, you know, God sees everything. And for Christians, our job is to love God, love others, love the nations, share the gospel, do ministry. We do that. And we're going to let the Lord take care of everything else. Though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished, but the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. We're doing God's work. God will deliver everything. And the posterity, meaning that future generations, if we're doing what God wants us to do, he'll take care of them. As a ring of gold, and this is interesting, in a swine snout, in a pig's nose. So is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. Hmm, something to think about. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is one who scatters yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. And there's a spiritual principle to this, and it's about giving back to the Lord. And the Lord, um, and in fact, Jesus said this in Luke 6. Let me see. Luke 6, it's 38. Jesus said, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. You know, God is no debtor of man. And if we want to give, if we're generous and give back to him, he will bless. He will be no debtor of man. And God sees the heart. He wants a cheerful giver. But not only that, are we generous with others? And I'm not talking about generous where others can see that, oh, this guy gave a building here and with his name on it. I'm just talking about people who are everyday people. Are we generous? Or are we always counting on, you know, oh, he took me out to dinner, I need to take him back to dinner, and that's just so hard. But we should just have a generous heart. Everything is God's. Our money, our time, our life, my heartbeat, my breath is God's. What am I going to do with it? I want to honor him with it. I want to, I can't take it with me. So let's be generous. And this is what he says. There's one who scatters yet increases more. God will never allow you to outgive him. And there is one who withholds more than what is right and leads to poverty. If you're stingy and if you're just counting like, Oh, you know, we need to educate others about, you know, saving pennies, and but we need to put, no. Let's worry about ourselves, right? And make sure that we're being generous and not being this, you know, just so stingy and just, and, you know, is anybody going to see that I give? No, that's not the way to do it. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Again, the Lord, the Lord will make sure that he's no debtor. He's not a debtor to you or to me. And we need, we should, based on his word and based on what he's given us. He blessed us so much. We're so rich because he blessed us. We have forgiveness of sins. We have eternal life. We have his mercy. We should bless others. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessings will be on, on the head of him who sells it. 
He who earnestly seeks good finds favor, but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but righteousness will flourish like the foliage or branches. He who troubles his own house will inherit the wind, but the fool will be the ser- will be servant to the wise of heart. You know, if you trouble your own house, and I'll say this, if you trouble God's house, you will inherit the wind. Um, it's not a good place to trouble your own house or trouble God's house. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. We need to share the gospel. That's why um, this, uh, in fact, this whole year, Calvary is about evangelism, personal evangelism and corporate evangelism. And in fact, this coming Saturday, we're going to have training on personal evangelism from Pastor Lido. So for you guys, come. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, we're, he's, Pastor Lido is one of the great teachers of the Bible, and he has many good um, uh, ex- experiences. And he'll just give uh, his personal experience and from the Word of God. Uh, it'll be so good. He who wins souls is wise. If the righteous will be recompensed on the earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? You know, whatever we, if we think we can get away with sin, um, we're absolutely wrong. God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we're going to reap. And it may not be here on this earth, but we're going to meet the Lord himself, and there'll be judgment. So let's not mock God. Let's do what he says. Love him. Love others. Let's love the nations, and let's share the gospel. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. And I just pray that you would just allow your word again to just penetrate. And if anyone here lacks understanding, lacks wisdom. Lord, I just pray that they just search you and look to you and ask for that wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, Lord, bless each one. Watch over each one. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope to see you here next Wednesday. God bless you.